It's day two of Bob Folkrod's hunt for Mexico's desert bighorn, as he and guide David Brown look to reconnect with the pack of rams they located yesterday. We ought to take you along to find them, Dave. Right where they were at last night. What do you say? Get us stuff packed up here and get a little closer, and we're probably gonna have to go up through this canyon here, so pack all our gear and get after it. It'll be an all day here. So we made a game plan. We had about a two mile walk, which realistically is like walking in snow, and the sand kind of, you know, comes out from under your feet. So about two hours, we were at the base of the mountain. We had about a two mile hike so far up in the sand, which is like four miles when you're walking through the sand. The sheep should be on the other side. We're gonna walk up to the saddle, get up on top, and David Jung's eyes are gonna, is gonna spot him, you know? So that's our game plan. I'll spot him, you shoot him. Hey, that's what you call a team effort right there. And a team effort is what it takes to bag a ram in this steep, forbidding country. Now, finally up on top, Bob and David hope they haven't lost their sheep. They're in this bowl someplace. It took us uh, about three and a half hours to get up there. David's over there looking right now for where they was. We're just trying to, trying to find them, trying to locate them. Then reposition ourselves in there for a shot. Hopefully, wind is good right now, sun is good, we got everything in our favor. The wind's hitting me right, right here, it's swirling a little bit. But the heat of the day it should continue to rise, so hopefully we got everything in our our favor. This is exciting. Desert sheep, man, that's, it just doesn't get any better than that right there, I can tell you. With the wind and terrain in their favor, hopes are high. But when David locates the rams down around a knob, it's time to call an audible on Bob's first stock. I just went over there and took a quick pee for about 10 minutes. We're a little too far east. I think those sheep are around a little knob up against the face. So we're gonna go back around where we came from and get on a knob and look back. Should give us the angle we need, okay? Needing to take some elevation and try to get the drop on these kings of the mountain, Bob and David head for the high ground, hoping for a clean shot. Let me tell you about this climb. You know, it's one thing going through the sand. You know, it took us a couple hours just to get to the bottom of the hill. Now we got to make this climb. And I don't care where you are, sheep hunting is sheep hunting. In this particular place, I mean, it's uh, big boulders and there's sand and cactuses and everything. And then we had to cross over. We had to come back down over, over a cliff. And there was some, there was some hairy places where you you basically respected it. You took your time. And I was using my walking stick and. You know, and, and, and the thing about when you get into those places like that, it's basically slow yourself down, take your time. You don't want to fall down and, you know, bang up your rifle, you bang your scope up, then you got to start all over again. We really cheated to the left because we wasn't exactly sure where those sheep went up the valley or not. So we really went all the way over to one side to see whether they had came up that valley or not. Once we got up on top, I mean, it was like, it was breathtaking. I mean, every place I've ever hunted sheep has got its own beauty, but when you're sitting on top of a mountain and you're looking down and you're seeing the cactuses and you're looking over the ocean and everything, I mean, I don't care who you are, you just gotta take in what every piece of country has to offer. And every one of them's got its own beauty. And when you're standing on top of that mountain, your main goal is to find the sheep, but you have to take just a minute because it's breathtaking. We're on the back side of that pole, about 700 yards from where we are, and there's a big gully in between us, as quiet as it is. Maybe we can go back around, go down that ridge right there, drop over them, and then hopefully they feed around this way. So we dropped down and we came down this one chute. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty steep. It took several hours, a lot of getting in position that we thought we were in that was gonna be in a good position it wasn't. So we just kept funneling down the ridge. And we got down and we glassed again and we couldn't find them. They was just over that crown, just a little bit where we couldn't see them. I said, okay, we're gonna make one more move. We're talking all day now. We left at seven o'clock in the morning and it's, you know, it's pushing 3.30, quarter to four. Finally got in a spot, we weren't gonna go any further. The wind was gonna get bad for us. I made the decision that if they didn't come back and funnel back into that canyon, 
that we were going to back out and come back in the next morning. We decided, OK, we're going to set up here. We're going to wait till dark. Hopefully, they cross back over. As it turned out, it worked out perfect. The rams finally fed through, came back on the same funnel. We just kind of dropped our packs and everything. And I just started to pull my rifle and my tripod out of my pack. And Dave says, right there they are. Right there, they just come around the corner. At long last, the rams appear. Now it's time to relax, think like a predator, and let that Winchester do its job. It's the heat of the moment, and Bob is ready. I got real comfortable. I'm sitting there, and it's just, I mean, almost like shooting off a bench the way I'm set up right now. Got him. Got him. He's the second one down. The top one's got really heavy tips, but the other one's a little longer. He's got the belt you're looking for, Bob, where he kicks out. Is that the one you want? Yeah. OK. There was two big sheep in there and kind of two mediocre sheep. And the one big one dropped down, and mine turned broadside, reached up there to grab something to eat. And I says, I got him. OK, if that one drops down, I got him. Well, Here we go. Down he is. Good shot, Bob. Man, I squeezed it off, and boom, poleaxed him, and he went down. Back that scope up and get ready to give him another one just in case. Oh, he's down, he's down. We didn't want to bust him out because he's got other hunters in there, so we just kind of took our time. It took us about an hour or an hour and a half to get to where they, they finally was. And then when we got up to him, it was like, oh my goodness, there was actually no ground shrinkage at all. Right there she is, man. Beautiful, beautiful sheep. Yep. Excellent stock all day. Finally came together. Good equipment. Good scope, good binoculars, good ammo, good rifle. Good communication. Good guides, good communications, yeah. and this is what happens when everything comes together. I almost broke down there just for a second. I mean, it, I can't I can't begin to tell you how prestigious one of these desert sheep are. This is what Bob came in for. One ram peeled out. There was two rams in the group, this one and another one that was heavier at the tips. He was a little shorter. But I'm pretty ecstatic. David put a tape on his, on his bases, and it was 17-inch bases plus. Carried his length all the way out through there, and wound up to be a Boone and Crockett sheep. That's extra icings and extra candles on the cake. There's a beautiful desert sheep right there. Bob. He did excellent, man. No trophy ram ever comes easy, and Bob Folkrod has earned this Boone and Crockett desert bighorn with hard work, calm nerves, and all the right tools. And we played that sheep by the book. It took us all day, right from the first thing in the morning till just before dark, hunting with Dave Brown, my guide. It's been absolutely one incredible adventure. Words can't describe it, you know, my excitement and, and how I feel. You know, when I see a client succeed, it brings a lot of gratification to me and what we put into it. And I, I live through them. I don't get to pull the trigger, but every time something goes down and it means so much to those people, it. it brings a certain level of humbleness to the situation. Well, there's guides, and then there's, you know, there's guides like, you know, like David. And a lot of the guides I hunt with, I call them the real deal because they're old, they've been there, they've seen it, you know. But I want to tell you what, this guy's got the makings for the real deal. The conversations I've had with Bob Polkrod, i got to tell you, the guy's a straight shooter. I mean, he will tell you exactly how it is. I mean, at least the way he sees it, right or wrong, he will give you his honest opinion. I like that about a person. It brings it back to the old days, and he's old school. He's been around the block a long time, and I, I value that. Pursuing epic animals and sharing once-in-a-lifetime experiences in the great outdoors, as any hunter can attest.